clicked on this video because you wanted to learn what abusing steroids look like from an outside perspective. I don't know if that's uh, to find out if your son or daughter is using steroids or if your best friend is, but here's the sauce. We're gonna start from the most obvious features and break it down to the least obvious features, and these should be very clear cut. And obviously here, more muscle mass goes without saying, but I believe that steroid use goes far beyond muscle mass. Anyone can really develop an impressive amount of muscle, so the proxy of muscle being an indicator of being not natural, beyond a certain point, of course, like if you're looking like Jay Cutler, you're definitely not natural, but there is some really impressive natural physiques out there. And this really does mean that there is going to be a significant need to differentiate what is natural or not natural outside of just muscular size. Again, I think we all can very clearly say that there is a certain degree of size someone can obtain that makes them look completely not natural, but there is a lot of natural physiques that are really impressive. So let's get into the more specific things that can dictate whether someone is using steroids or not. Male breast tissue development is pretty unfortunately common in people who abuse steroids. It's not guaranteed by any means, and a lot of people use steroids just fine without developing any sort of male breast tissue. However, many that do use steroids, especially the ones that are undereducated in their use and how to use steroids, will develop gyno. It's just sort of a consequence of using the products that they do without having the education on how to treat the side effects of these products. And what makes this especially hard is obviously people are going to have their gyno covered up, and there's really severe gynecomastia or male breast tissue development, which is what we have in this case. And then there's also less significant male breast tissue development, which you'll only see when people are really lean or extending their arms, such as this fella doing the front double bicep. But the moral of the story is it's going to look similar to this, some sort of protrusion from around the nipple area on a male that certainly shouldn't be there. This isn't the pec itself. This is a specific protrusion from the nipple area, oftentimes bigger in diameter than the nipple area itself. In someone that has less significant gynecomastia development, this is, can really be what it looks like. And this is what you'll see most often, especially when someone isn't hyper lean. They'll have a small protrusion that's not very noticeable, especially with a shirt or something covering it up. It's still noticeable to the keen eye. Also, you could see this in the form of puffy nipples or almost water retention in the nipple area on a male. For example, when your nipples are cold, you'll notice that they contract and they're very small in comparison to your day day life with lukewarm temperature, but they become very tight if you say get kinky and put an ice cube on. If someone is using steroids, it's the opposite of the ice cube nipple. It's sort of a protruded nipple that's inflamed and doesn't really have the defined tip of the nipple and the body of the nipple. I am just making anatomy up at this point. Moving on, hair loss is extremely, extremely common with bodybuilders or anybody male or female using anabolic androgenic steroids or sauce or roids or gear, whatever you want to call it. As a secondary characteristic, androgens are always almost going to affect the androgen receptor at the hair follicle site, causing hair follicle miniaturization, which is exactly as it sounds. The follicle or pore in which the follicle is in shrinks and can no longer sustain life in a hair's life cycle and you lose it permanently. Interestingly, the same effect is what's growing other hair, but we'll talk about this later. Now, as much as a bodybuilder might try to defend it or somebody using androgens, they're going to tell you you always up left and down that they're not balding. Usually what this is going to look like is diffuse thinning, which is kind of what I have actually. It's like thinning. If you separate your hair, you can see thinning of the hair follicles. It's not necessarily like your bald patching, but you just have thinning in between your hair because follicles all over systemically are falling out at a rate that doesn't necessarily show a bald spot, but just presents as a hair that's less thick. Then you also have the sort of typical Norwood Reaper, the typical bald guy stuff with the receding hairline around his temples or the donut in the back of the head. This is the guy that really gets hit hard and can't hide it very well at all. Either of these things, I'll be honest, are a fucking huge red flag for the dating market in a sexual pool, so it's not advantageous to lose hair. It's going to be something that these people are very self-conscious about and have likely noticed it far beyond the uh, time it took you to notice it. Now, this is common for people who have been using steroids for years as opposed to a couple months. What you will notice with people who have been using steroids within the short term is that their hair falls out much more quickly. So let's say if you grab a piece of their hair, pull out, you're going to see a lot more hair follicles within that hair, which you can't see on mine because 
I take hair treatment now, you would see more hair follicles within that pole of hair if they just started taking steroids. Now, if they've been taking steroids for a long time, you'll certainly be able to see the baldness happening. Everybody who you know on social media who is taking steroids has either had a hair transplant or is bald. Dr. Mike Isretel. We have Greg Doucette, who's had a hair transplant. Uh, basically, any other bodybuilder outside of that is bald. So, you know, anybody who's used androgens has likely met their hair's end. Besides, if they took really early precautions like I did, which thankfully, you know, I mean, <laughs> leading into the next point, and this one's a bit odd based off the tangent we just talked about, but hair growth. When you are taking androgens, one of the secondary characteristics that you do develop is enlarged hairs in other areas than your scalp, which is super interesting. Essentially, you experience rapid accumulation of body hair on your shoulders, back, neck, all the areas that you don't necessarily want it, but it starts to coming out in droves. And this is something that can instantly give someone away if they're notoriously a bald person, meaning they don't have much hair on on their body, arms, or anything, even legs. And then suddenly, they start growing a lot of it on their arms, legs, chest, back, these kind of things. If your buddy's looking like a forest and he suddenly got a little bit more jacked lately, something's going on there. One of the biggest keys here in things that you need to pay attention to is a rapid accumulation in muscle mass. If they've been training for a year, two years, three years, and you've seen some pretty good progress, but it's been about average, slow, you know, it's not like they shot up in progress during that period of time. Then after those three years, they suddenly just accelerate their progress. That's a big red flag. This is kind of not a for sure way to guarantee if someone is taking steroids because simply put there's a lot of people who take steroids the statistic is about one in three people in your gym right now take steroids but they'll never look like it because people just don't respond well to steroids some people other people respond amazingly and they can take a little bit and get a lot of results other people can take a lot of it very little minuscule amount of results but fuck you bitch shut the fuck up i think on average someone training naturally after about three to four years is going to really start to slow in their progressions and you're not going to see too much improvement so if they've been training for two to three years you've seen progress but it's not awe dropping and then suddenly within a span of three months 12 weeks they blow up 20 more pounds you for sure know this individual has started to hit the sauce for sure now along with that rapid accumulation of muscle tissue the other giveaway is going to be their facial features i've shown this before and i might even be able to pull up a video here and put it right next to my face hopefully somewhere on here and you can see facial changes happen pretty quick and it's kind of scary you'll notice that they have more edema on their face, which generally can mean a little bit more of a filling texture around their jawline. You'll see this like bump here. That's very common within people who use androgens. They start to hold water around their face. We call it like the moon face. And I'm not even, I'm on TRT right now, right? This is just sort of what's happened as an adaptation of the times. I'm lean body mass, but I still have like this double chin thing. And then the other thing you'll see is like their cheeks swell up like this. You know, you'll get guys that look like this and like their eyes start to, to swell up. There's a great video, the Trend Twins recently. There is going to be some degree of facial structural changes and that's usually in the short term edema in the long term you'll develop like a wider jaw which you'll see in the videos that i posted usually cheekbones will rise and the forehead bone this bone specifically will start to protrude a little bit pretty common with people who have been using steroids for a long time not necessarily a short term of course acne is a serious issue and it sucks for people who are or are not taking steroids but when you do take androgens those androgens work on the sebaceous glands within our skin these sebaceous glands are like little portals in our skin that secrete things to get it out of our body. This includes cholesterol, triglycerides, and some bacteria. This, of course, spills out onto our skin in the form of that oily texture. And in so doing, it can cause a lot of infections on the dermis of our skin, leading to inflammation, which then leads to pimples. Now, steroid acne isn't your standard acne. It's not going to be whiteheads that you can easily pop with your fingers. I mean, some of it will be, but a lot of it will be cystic acne. It looks more swollen and red and inflamed. I mean, just really nasty shit. And you don't often see this on people's face or even like body parts that are out in the open arms and stuff like this. You can, but it's just not as common. You'll typically see it on a chest or a back. And most professional bodybuilders that you see won't have this. I, I'm not busting out with acne I'm right now because like Canada sucks and the climate sucks, but this is beyond this point. It's because they've seeked out treatment or they just respond favorably to androgens. I seeked out treatment in the past, which has created a 
genomic change in myself, which led to less acting, taking, you know, super dosing Accutane essentially. A lot of these people do this, but when you're starting, you often don't have the tools or the assets to take care of yourself in this capacity. Think of Sam Sulek up until about last year, he had horrible acne and then he started to treat it with Accutane and it went away. This is the timeline of most steroid users. They start taking steroids, get really bad acne, and then they need something to treat the acne, such as Accutane or doxycycline. Now, the next one's a bit hard to explain, but skin tone and texture really does begin to change when someone can use steroids. Pigmentation usually changes into one or two colors. It's going to be sort of like this purplish, near purplish hue. Think of like the Liver King or a suspiciously dark tan, which I guess, honestly, the Liver King is another great example of this. He's kind of the two in one special. He's got the purple skin going on and the abnormally dark tan. A total difference between someone who's natural in tan versus someone who is taking steroids or things that can enhance your tan and what that tan looks like. Then the skin texture is more rough. It's more leathery. It's not as I would say nice to look at. And this often happens due to increased oxidation. You can look a lot older when you are supposed to be younger. And someone who starts to take steroids, you'll often notice it within their facial features aging quickly, pretty dang fast after starting. Again, I'm sadly the, the best public example out there is probably the Liver King. If you've ever watched the breakdown video of the Liver King where they exposed him for using steroids, his early videos are, it's a completely different human. His facial structure and features look entirely different from after the fact or when he started to use them. Vascularity is another really common feature with greater muscle density comes greater vascularity. Essentially, the denser the muscle fiber, the more it pushes out veins and the bigger the blood volume you have due to erythrocytosis and things like this, the more those veins are going to present to the top of your skin. This is something we see chronically in bodybuilding. I think about Nick Walker's calves, for example, these varicose veins or varicose looking veins kind of start to pop out everywhere. It's not necessarily unhealthy or considered bad, but it doesn't look good in some cases. Sometimes that vascularity is really good, but for the most part, having an extremely vascular body, especially like abdomen, legs, calves, really clear sign of someone's abusing steroids. Vascularity in the arms, that's going to be anybody, but the specifics on the abs and the legs and the calves, it's a little bit more indicative of steroid use. Another one you probably haven't considered yet is disproportionate strength. What I mean by this is, let's just say you have someone who's a 165 pounds when they start. They start taking some form of anabolic steroids, whether that's oral or injectable, who knows. Their strength accumulation will happen almost immediately. It's a unique effect that steroids have, and it's in part through a neurological mechanism, but they will increase strength drastically. You often hear bodybuilders say like they have bubbly muscle or really like protruding muscle. And this is true with someone who's been training for a very long time. Someone who just started steroids isn't going to look like that. In fact, they might not even look like they have or can obtain the strength required to lift the weights that they're lifting, but somehow they're still lifting. It takes a lot of time to create those physical adaptations to show how much strength you have. And it's actually why a lot of bodybuilders injure themselves because the steroids can create a artificial sense of strength and safety within that strength. The tendons and ligaments haven't really built up the ability to withstand loads such as the ones they're lifting and therefore you get a tear or something much worse. Then you have bubbly muscles, something that sticks out, something I, I just kind of mentioned, shoulders, traps, weird muscle features. It's something you'll see less often on people who are just starting their journey, but people who have been chronically using steroids for years will develop these features. Again, this is typically in shoulders, quads, arms. Think about Chris Bumstead, okay? Think about his shoulders when he's really lean, how they're super peaked. They're like mountains hanging off of his shoulders. Like it's, it's crazy. They're out here, right? That is super common within people who have a prolonged exposure to any form of anabolic steroid. Vocal changes are another big one, and this isn't just for women. My voice changed a lot when I started using any form of steroid, even more than I even realized. Again, if you go back and I'll probably put a clip up here somewhere of me when I was first starting this YouTube channel. It's Saturday and I have to work, to work on a Saturday. Holy shit, like the difference is perplexing. I won my natural pro card. I took a couple of videos after I won my natural pro card. And then shortly after I won that natural pro card, I started taking anabolics. And you can tell immediately because my voice changes almost immediately. And what specifically happens is people will typically develop edema around their larynx and their, their, their larynx or their vocal folds will actually hypertrophy due to being stimulated by those androgens over a prolonged period of time. This distorts the vocal vibrations within those folds and then causes the octaves of your voice to deepen. 
again, this can happen very fast. I'm talking two months, three months, and you'll have a full octave change in your voice. And another thing is just having consistently low body fat with virtually no muscle loss. One really sad part about being natural that honestly does suck is you just can't be shredded year round, sustain physiological function or muscle mass. So it's one of the big red flags you see in influencers who maintain a shredded physique year round, but don't seem to lose any muscle or even progress in muscular development. If a natural person was to do this, they would lose muscle progressively until they had nothing left. This is just because they're starving themselves and their body needs the required resources to keep fueling itself. But when you're using steroids, your metabolic rate speeds up a little bit, have more of an influence to tell your body to stay there, muscle, don't go anywhere, and instead use any fat that we can. And this is typically what you see is someone who's shredded, who can maintain being shredded physiologically normal existence, or like not suffering or dying or doing literal hell just to stay shredded. They can just stay shredded year round, chilling. Uh, obviously not chilling. It still takes a a ton of work, right? A ton of work. The steroids are not going to get you shredded. They can do it a little bit easier than the next guy who's natural. A great example here is, is Joe Ligner. I took very low doses of anabolics, very, very low doses of anabolics, and able to maintain a really shredded physique year round. Still did two hours of cardio every day, seven days a week. Still had a highly restrictive diet in terms of eating about 2000 ish calories per day. He was able to do that, still train, still do everything that he needed to make content and be a normal human without losing muscle at any point. Next thing is kind of related to roid rage sort of a mythical thing actually, but it does really happen in some individuals. Turns out with what science has backing us, it's not necessarily roid rage that you'll experience when taking steroids. In fact, it's because you're already naturally an asshole or get upset easily that you'd become more of that roid rager. What steroids are going to do is increase the amplitude of the persona you already are. So let's say we give a Buddhist a gram of testosterone, he is going to be more giving and more selfless than the next Buddhist who's natural. But if we gave the guy who has road rage, progressively that worsens every single year a gram of testosterone he is going to significantly be at more risk on the road and likely have much worse road rage so what you're looking for isn't someone who's just on a roid rage that's not necessarily accurate as to what might happen it's your one friend acting abnormally annoying at the bars when he's already generally annoying but now he's like 10 times worse and almost completely intolerable and a little bit more jacked so that's steroids talking this one is a uh, a bit interesting but and maybe more for the females watching who have male counterparts who could be taking steroids the uh the testicular shrinkage is a very real thing now myself i say that my testicles really haven't changed much since starting steroids about eight years ago I really haven't lost much volume, but I have other people in my circle that have lost a ton of volume per testing via water displacement. <laughs> Ask me about that later. Seriously though, if your dude starts turning into a plum to sort of a walnut kind of guy, there's a likelihood that he's probably taking some steroids. Of course, this only encompasses males, but it should be a pretty clear indication or list of indications to tell you if someone is taking steroids or not, whether that's a fitness influencer online or your best friend chilling at home. Hopefully it was enough for you to create those conclusions on your own. However, if you feel like you want to see female phenotypes who take steroids and how to determine who those might be, comment down below and let me know if this video is interesting to you because I'll happily make another video like this one, but for females. If I missed anything that you think is specifically tailored towards people who abuse steroids, put it down in the comment section below so other people who see that can understand a little bit more about what they need to look out for. Fake natties are real and they're out there everywhere. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video.